anything anyone First, 2020, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to the Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Vendor Terminal Links, episode number 556. And oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> So, um, I, I I put my title down, which sounds like a, an episode title of a Japanese anime show. Watch! More D&D! Another crit roll watch through! Anyways. Okay. Only a few people who get that. So, more towards the end of the month. In fact, in the last couple of days, I received uh, a package uh, which contained a brand new Apple Watch. Um, now, uh, uh, d- d- since he found out, I uh, now have a, um, uh, uh, a, our, our local sex therapist uh, on walkie-talkie. So he can, he can now just walkie-talkie my Apple Watch. Uh, I also get notifications for Telegram on it. Uh, I've actually been kind of happy with it. It gives me reminders to stand and breathe. It wants me to fill in my rings, and I'm like, no. So what I hear is you're pushing back against the man? Yeah, (laughs) just that part of the watch, I don't really care about. But Mm. get notifications. I can see that uh, new Zazzle product uh, just been posted for sale. Mm. Yeah. Do we want to talk about that partly, real quick? Partly cloudy. I mean, we could. Um, I'm not sure how well it's up. If you want to check the store to see if you can see it. One moment. One moment. While you're doing that. Uh, in addition to the watch, um, my, my life in May uh, outside of recording shows and uh, working has been um, uh, watching D and D like all the time. It's like if I'm mm. not doing anything else, what's on my TV is some sort of D and D show. Mm. I finish all of the high rollers content, <laughs> everything. <laughs> the nice. first campaign, uh, their uh, uh, Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, a mini campaign, their Waterdeep Dragon Heist mini campaign, all their one shots. Uh, uh, I got caught up in their their current campaign, and I watched all the content they've had for their Curse of Strahd campaign they're doing uh, during their their isolation. Uh, mm-hmm. Unlike unlike uh, Critical Role, which kind of has a different vibe. They're actually continuing their campaign by doing it on Roll20 and doing it all remotely. Well, and so eventually I'll get back in, into their studio and everything. But um, Critical Role is basically on hiatus uh, until they can get back into the studio. And they're mm-hmm. doing some other uh, rem- remote-based content and stuff. But, uh, but in the meantime, the continuing campaign for me is High Rollers. Which is great. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, but because they finished all their stuff, I didn't have anything to do. So I'm watching. Cam- I'm rewatching Campaign One of Critical <laughs> Role. Nice. From the very, 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 very beginning. 
Mm. Getting through all the original technical issues. I just got into the trials of the take. Uh, so I got Felicia Day and Elizabeth McGlynn uh, 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 on this. And this is their, their first, the first time uh, Elizabeth is on there. So uh, who has a great character named Zara. If you watch the, the first campaign, you'll figure it. You'll, you'll find out. Mm. Um, but yeah, also playing, continuing to play D&T. In fact, I've been DMing for Mr. Angelini Cook uh, because he's working on uh, incorporating d d into his therapy. So one of the things he needs to do as part of that is to play and eventually he's going to DM. So I'm dra dra uh, dragging him through uh, Dragon Vice P Fire Peak showing how a not so great, relatively inexperienced DM DMs. And on Tuesdays, I'm playing my other one. However, my previous campaign ended because the DM didn't want to DM anymore. Mm. It was just kind of like, it, and it was more of, I'm not ha having enough time to prepare sort of thing. I doesn't think that you would really be able to give us quality experience or something like that. Mm -hmm. So when the other players is now DMing uh, oh. and we're doing Waterdeep Dragon Heist and into uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mate. So we're actually going to go to 20 between those two. Um, and I now have a new Dragonborn Barbarian because as far as I could tell, nobody was going the tank route. So I decided that I'll just continue tanking. Cool. Instead of a Warforge, he's a Dragonborn. And he's dumb. I'm so glad for my intelligence being six. It's great. I'm very happy. <laughs> I, and I'm excited. We've only had a couple of... We've only had t two sessions for the, for this campaign so far, so haven't gotten mm. too far into it. But. Uh, so, my life... D and D is pretty much it, and work. Damon, how about you? <laughs> so same old, same old here. <laughs> um, to be to be honest, like um, still not working, um, still furloughed, getting unemployment, dealing with that. Um, Still um, staying at home most of the time because I go out, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the COVID-19 climate and other things going on, which, yeah. Um, and really just, like I said, just, not, you know, relaxing and doing stuff at home. Um, one of the things we've been able to do is we've been able to pull, um, despite being unemployed, we've been getting enough money to kind of help with putting something together. And we're working on um, a couple of updates around the house. One of the big ones that we've been trying to do is we're going to get some new railings on the back porch um, that has been needed for, well, since we poured, technically since we poured the steps, but we haven't really had a, an opportunity to get to really do it because um, it just never, it wasn't a high priority like situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we figured now that we're both home, we can, you know, have an opportunity to be available to do this stuff. So um, we got, um, we've gotten one estimate in, we had another guy come out and he's gonna be writing an estimate and hopefully getting it to us if if it's not in my email box or phone yet, it hopefully will get here earlier this week. Um, and I'm hoping it's not too much, but I think they'll be okay with like paying things off and payment plans or anything along those lines. So um, worst case scenario, it should be hopefully one and done, but 
depending on what happens, might take a little while to get off the books, if that makes sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, like, you know, Jim and I are like here and I'm here and I'm watching TV and, and working around the house and Jim's doing a lot of stuff and working around the house and we're working on the backyard and, you know, he's finding deals on um, uh, concrete or yeah, concrete blocks to kind of do something in the, on the back uh, patio area to kind of get a raised bed so we can start planting um, a garden like with like, yeah. you know, tomatoes and Ooh. stuff like that. So, yeah, so um, my biggest concern with that is we have a lot of fucking squirrels. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we have a lot of fucking squirrels. But hopefully they'll be able to, we'll be able to do something. He's working on it. We'll see what happens. But that's really, honestly, it. Um, you were talking about D&D, Jeff, and um, I was going to, I was, I had started the game on a Tuesday, but unfortunately our DM, um, like you were talking about with your one DM, it wasn't that he didn't want to play anymore. He just found out that he does not have the, um, he doesn't have enough spoons to, to put the energy or to focus the energy on running the game. So Mm -hmm. that's been put on the back burner on a flip of that. My game that I've been playing for a long while, um, we might be starting back up later this week. So, Oh, nice. Happy about that. So, yay. yay. Um, and I just finished GMing my Mutants and Masterminds game um, as of Mon- last Monday. So, we're going to start playing another game soon. So, fun, fun, fun. Nice. Um, yeah. Work has been. Um, non-existent <laughs> but um i had a call with my boss on friday um nothing like indicating any kind of timeline unfortunately but she pretty much you know asked how i was doing what was going on checking in um she let me know that if she finds out anything she's gonna let me she'll be i'll be the first to know so that's good we'll see what happens <gasps> oh one more thing. I got to sign up for health benefits at work, even though I'm not working there. I was still able to sign up for benefits. Oh, nice. And, and, and you'll be lucky to know or happy to know that someone is our, is on my health insurance benefits <gasps> now. Oh, yes. One of the one of one of the bit of like it was a uh, not my long term plan, but one of the quote unquote things I've been wanting to do was I wanted to have Jim listed as my domestic partner in our system, which was a new thing that we couldn't do before, mm-hmm. right? And with everything that was going on around this time last year, um, with regards to work, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to get him on my benefits because then I didn't want him to have the benefits and then, oh, well, you no longer work for us. So bye. So now he is officially um, on my benefits and it's only going to cost, it's going to cost a little more per paycheck, but it Mm -hmm. should be worth it in the end because he'll have health benefits. Yay. Um, So yay. Unless something else happens, which, you know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hopefully everything returns back to relative normality. Exactly. I did say uh, relative normality. Mm-hmm. I did say normality because most likely it will not be normal. Oh, no. But, yeah. Yeah. That's... It must be me. Gary? Uh... <laughs> My new job has turned it basically into um, all public health all the time. <laughs> I don't know what else to say Surprise! beyond that. Well, I don't think I would be quite feeling that way if it wasn't for the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the pandemic is pretty much 
it is definitively the majority of my job, if not 100% of my job right now. So the job I'm supposed to be doing that I haven't fully learned yet, haven't fully been trained for, is like kind of, well, it's not even sidelined or backburnered. Like there's, there's really not a whole lot that I can do in the midst of stuff because every day is consumed with working on the other stuff. Mm. So, um, yeah. And I, I really kind of wish I was in therapy right now. <laughs> um, oh, no. like just for my mental health about like the, the battle of like going out in public and driving through and seeing people today. So many people, no masks at mm. all. Like, like, I, I feel like now we've developed as an American society, at least for me locally, it's, oh, I'm outdoors. Outdoors is great. Outdoors is endorsed. The virus isn't very active outdoors, so I don't have to worry about wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So the only place you really have to mask is a business. Mm. And there's nothing, there, there's no lies detected in what I just said. It's just right. disconcerting because our caseload keeps going up. And like the distance between the recovered and the new is slightly increasing, um, mm. and we, you know, and so it, there are still vulnerable populations of people, you know, and so we're trying to adjust to that, you know, and there's some new changes coming in procedure and stuff for us, um, which should allow us to go back to focusing more on what we were hired for and less mm. on the pandemic. Um, but that remains to be seen. And it's going to be a big adjustment for everybody to like only work on a certain part of it and then stop and hand it off. And like where we, you know, we hit the ground running from the very beginning and it was full steam ahead and everybody was fully invested. Like the, just this past week, we had to address that from the very beginning, we didn't have a protocol to say, which we really should have. Like you are here for this amount of time and yes, while there are 24 hours in a day and it is appreciated that like you will stay late and do extra and blah, blah, blah. Like there comes a point where this will not be healthy because you will mm. burn out. Like you will, you mm -hmm. will put in many long days. You will stay late on a Friday when you had plans. You will feel like you're sacrificing your personal life and you will become irritable about that fact. And that has happened for a majority of, you know, my team members, you know, my coworkers that, uh, so just this past week, we kind of like brainstormed through anger <laughs> up the chain about making some adjustments. And we've gotten some good things out of it that it's like, OK, definitively, we're putting a time thing like at this point, things are now going to probably move on to the next day. Like, do not be sacrificing your personal life. Like, it's not an edict, but it's kind of a it's a good guidance. And I think people felt better going into this weekend for the first time in a couple months about knowing like you do not need to stay till nine o'clock at night, basically <laughs> as some people have. Um, and I have stayed three hours on a Friday after what my end of day, giving up my part-time job so I could do this other thing. Mm. Um, so while financially it benefits me because I'm getting paid time and a half, which mm -hmm. is way more than I would have been paid at my part-time job at a flat rate. Um, my part-time job is taking, is taking a hit though. And, um, I'm going to talk about this openly. I'm not proud of this, but my, what's called attendance adherence is completely in the shitter. <laughs> and I've been, you know, given my warning, um, mm. uh, because while the company can be flexible, we're also accountable to a client that we have a contract mm -hmm. with. And so when the client's expecting me to do work and I can't do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a thing. Now I'm moving into the month of June. So I'll be curious to see what that looks like in the month of May, whether or not I get the next escalation level or not. So mm. the, the shitty thing is by the end of June or July, I might not have a second job <laughs> simply because of the way things are going. I mean, that I don't, I don't have control over it. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be blunt and honest with you, honey. Uh, as someone who has worked in similar fields, yeah, you might not. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, on... I've, 
I've I see the writing on the wall. I'm no yeah. fool. Yeah. Oh, and it's or, or you or you might according to uh, uh, what my experience at my job is, but mm. we won't get into that. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I, I that was something that happened this, you know, this month. I got, I got the sit down, quote unquote, with my new supervisor, um, new to me, like as far as assignment, I should say, not like oh. brand new person. Yeah. And you know, we had this conversation about the fact that you know that I'm only working just a few hours a week, so it is really challenging for me to stay on top of like all the procedural change stuff, the updates, to read the emails, like from a Monday through a Friday. Like, I'm only working Monday and Friday evenings right now. Between Monday and Friday, I could come in on Friday for my couple of hours evening shift and find 150 emails. Mm. And I have to delete like 120, 130 of them because they're all fucking posts from the internal chat system. Mm. Like, like basically like, hey, you missed this. Well, like you weren't logged in. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, like if it's important, it's an actual email, not a recap or, you know. Or whatever of of stuff. So, um, so I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, I kind of have to get caught up, you know. And it's like, you know, there were there was some work to be done this past Friday, just a couple nights ago. About you know, I had some open cases. Uh, well, it, the new system, it's cases, and the old system is called support tickets. But anyways, it's like follow up. Like, could you find out what's going on? Da, 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 da. Like, so I knocked that stuff out. Like, I was I was pretty proud about like what I got accomplished on Friday. But you know, there's this sword kind of dangling overhead which is you know uh if because what i don't know is i don't know specifically where the attendance thing lays for the month of may mm -hmm. and then how, whether or not that will be important because what i realize is, is that i basically need to have like one to two months of absolutely 100 percent perfect attendance to like clean up mm -hmm. because ever since miss corona arrived with covid like it's been playing hell with you know my availability so, and then my dad uh, had a fall this month, mm -hmm. as as happens. But so I called for um, emergency paramedic services. They came. They wanted him to go get checked out. He refused. He's of cognizant mind. He clearly knew where he was and all the good stuff. So my healthcare POA does not override him in that case. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was very frustrating because had he gone in and gotten some exams and possibly been like then sent for therapy, like had happened last fall, I know that like he would have been well taken care of and maintained and gotten some really good stuff like done over like the course of a week to a week and a half. But mm. that did not happen. So mm. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, there's that thing. <sighs> so yeah. Um, but I see everything through the lens of public health now, you know, as I'm, as I'm looking at stuff, um, you know, somebody, <laughs> I got to find this on Facebook because this will just go to show you like what my life has kind of turned into um, as an oddity. I recently, uh, well, I've been posting on my Facebook page. Uh, both of you may have seen that I do usually a Monday through Friday statistical update. Yeah. Like here's where PA is. Here's where the nation is. Here's where my county is like. And I've always been reporting on what's called the fatality rate, which is the death rate, like percentage. And someone recently was like, why are you always focusing on this? Like, that doesn't seem to, um, one, it's not very optimistic. And two, it's, you know, really kind of showing only part of the picture. <sighs> which is fair. Like, I didn't have a problem with, you know, the, the question kind of being asked and and. Uh, not so much like the criticism, but the, the, you know, approach. So, you know, the person says, I'm kind of puzzled by your statistics. Um, you know, wouldn't an infection rate be better um, as opposed to uh, a fatality rate? And so I kind of thought about it. <laughs> and I decided to reply. And I should have known it because it was going to take me a while to reply. Mm hmm. <laughs> that, that I was I was because my thought on it was like while I know you're not coming for me I'm also not gonna not answer to this do you know what I mean like I feel like I have a responsibility since I've already 
taken on the role of posting this information that I need to explain myself. Mm -hmm. So So anyways, I'm going to save you guys, but I wrote a big old paragraph (laughs) as a response. (laughs) Breaking down a couple of facts, a couple of things. And then my aunt (laughs) said, referring to the person that originally commented, wow, you just exhausted my brain with all that information. Like basically the two of us, like, our perspectives. So I was abused. Mm-hmm. Um, just purely because I was like, well, I guess that's what I've turned into. There we mm-hmm. go. You know, the, the, I'm going to break it all down. Break uh, it down now. Yeah. So, but, wow. Um, a long paragraph. Oh, did you just look at it? Well, my problem was, is I wanted to hit a couple of things and then I'm like, but we're talking about science and science is not clean cut black and white and short. Mm -hmm. It can be black and white. But if you pay attention to variables like opportunities, other options, things that can affect the science, like that's where it gets bigger and longer to explain. And like you guys would recognize, you know, when we've had Cisco on and we've talked about statistical, you know, analysis studies, Mm -hmm. quote unquote, that say, you know, you know, if you, you know, eat avocado toast every day, you get a higher sperm count. Like, you know, if something was to be claimed like that, it's like, okay, well, where is this really coming from? And where's the proof? Blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, that's why people get annoyed because you'd actually have to read the entire paper. (laughs) post study and understand you know the nuances of all that stuff and did they you know address things so as i was writing this i realized like well i want to make sure i say this and i say that blah 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 so it kind of went on and on it's not super long but yeah so that was Mm -hmm. but yeah so (laughs) i feel like that's the way my life has turned recently it's it's a lot of public health stuff (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not getting my actual core job stuff done. I mean, I don't fully know everything that is my job, but one of the main things that I'm kind of overseeing, I haven't been able to get a lot of momentum on mm-hmm. because I can't afford the bandwidth time <laughs> to I work on it. So I'm just like, I really, really want to get this thing done. But it's like, where do I sacrifice? Like, do I stay late? And... Because it also gets complicated because we get paid. So for our time that we're working on the pandemic, that is going to be covered up to a certain percentage as a reimbursement from the federal government. So uh, when you know that, it's like, okay, if you go overtime, and the thing for my job is we don't go overtime in a week. We go overtime by the day. Mm. So... Most individuals, especially, uh, I'll say this, like most individuals in the U.S., you work a 40-hour work week. Once you hit 40 hours and zero minutes and you go one minute over, you are now overtime for the week. Mm -hmm. We, on the other hand, only work X amount of hours a day per our contract with the county government. And once you cross the minute of the day instead of the whole week total, you're now in overtime. Mm. So, and I think the principle, the idea behind that is if you work more than your allotted hours on Monday, it's, 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 it's guaranteed you will be over for the week. Mm-hmm. What, what isn't flexible as an option is you don't get to work less. Like, let's say I worked nine hours on Monday and mm-hmm. I work an eight hour day. I don't get to take an hour off of a different day to avoid overtime for the week. That that is not a concept. That out that ninth out that eighth to ninth hour is overtime no matter what. Correct. Interesting. End of story. Um, and it's a new and it's a new model for me to get used to because, like, <laughs> I'm also I'm also like I was talking with one of my coworkers recently. I'm like I've done it all. Like I've worked third shift, second shift, first shift. I've worked multiple jobs. I've worked hourly. I've worked salary. Um, I've been supervisor management and management. Like I, I've been a bunch of things. So I see all the different through my experience, the different lenses. And this is a new one to me because I'm like, wait, what? Like, so also as an, as a, for instance, 
if I'm late to start my day in the morning, mm-hmm. I don't get to stay late and just like shift the time. I have to use up my accrued time off to make up for the late. Ooh. Right. So if I show up at 10 minutes after eight in the morning, I am now theoretically a quarter hour late. I have to claim 15 minutes of my time off from my accrued paid time off. Wow. Time. Yeah. Hmm. So <laughs> complicated. <laughs> no, it, it it's well, I don't really consider it as complicated. I consider it as a, um, a uh, I guess it's a form of discipline punishment. Like <laughs> don't be late or we'll just make you eat up your time off. Mm. but that's not you know it's not the way it's phrased but that's the way it's it's operated and it's frustrating to me because i'm like really like like so i get an hour lunch every day i'm like Mm -hmm. so what if i ended up like really truly oversleeping i'm a half hour late in the morning why can't i just take a half hour lunch and be done with it nope not allowed nope i'm like really so that's the part that frustrates me is the non the non flexible nature of the structure, and it's because it's a, a everything that has been built is based off of a contract, based on the on union. So therein lies the the challenge. Is you know, um, I'm used to working all, all well. All previous jobs were non union, so to me it was you know you just, and I think it's where you're allowed more flexibility. Like oh, yeah, not a big deal. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm just like, okay. Getting, I don't know. Get, getting used to it. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. Public health and Gary. Just a little window into things. Uh, mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. All right. Hey, let's go into the feedback. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Um, there has been a lot going on in the Facebooks, not necessarily for us. <laughs> Damn, that cocktail's good. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. I forgot I put some booze in it, and it's better that way. <laughs> um, <Thank you. laughs> Facebook likes. Uh, we would like to thank the following people for liking us on Facebook in the past month. Um, Eddie Hostorf, Hi, Tommy Eddie. Guy. Uh, Robert Wolf, Gray Krause, and Eduardo Lopez Calva. Thanks. Hey. In Instagram, uh, Facebook's cousin, uh, we got some new followers over on Instagram. Eddie Hausdorf, Muntzman, The Bear, 1701, Gabriel Majors. Hmm. Who that? That hmm. is. Fozzy Bear, that's B A R E. And Jean Pierre Luckman, or John Pierre Luckman, I'm not sure which. I have no she knows. I know Fozzie as well. Oh, do you? Yes. He, well, he's Eddie's partner. Oh, oh, look at you. Yes. They oh. recently moved, they used to live here in the city. Um, and I think they were from New York area, but, and they moved away for a while, but they're back now. So. Welcome back. Well, howdy, y'all. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Damon, tell us about what uh, YouTube, if you don't mind. Well, we have a new subscriber on YouTube, and that is Eduardo Maciel. Welcome. Hi. And that's like brand new as of today. Ooh. So. Yep. Over in the uh, Twitters, we have MattBear24, RealM814821129. Gamer, ba- gamer bra. God, that correctly. Uh, J. McKay, Melbourne. Pup Carnage. QS Massage Studio. Hmm. I wonder who that hmm. could be. Huh. Uh, one car two five three three nine two one eight. Smokes underscore da underscore boss. Uh, Andy Lipe Chaser. That Andy Lipe Chaser or is Andy a Lipe Chaser? I'm not sure. 
I don't know. That's a new word. And, it, and if they're a light chaser, what's a light? I'm looking it up now. <laughs> um, it might might just be his last thing. name, and he's a chaser. So, it, 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 um, pro probably the the former over the ladder. Uh, and last but not least, while well, uh, Damon's looking that up, weird underscore and underscore okay. okay. Well, I wonder if he's in Austin. Hmm. Weird. So the top definition on Urban Dictionary for light is the state of being in high focus and concentration. When a person is experiencing light, they are unstoppable. So Andy is an unstoppable chaser? Possibly. I mean, and there's also the life is a rather fat individual. Someone who is obese or even just a little, just a bit wide in the belly can be referred to as a light. Mm. The root of the word light is lipo, which means to fat as a noun, which refers to fat as a noun. So there you go. So Andy is a fat-bellied chaser? <laughs> Andy is fat-bellied wants a chaser? Andy, if you're listening, let us know <laughs> like yeah, what your what your what your description is like cuz I'm very intrigued now cuz um I had not heard of that before. Plus uh, uh, the, before we started specifically talking about that, I really kind of wanted to play this. Um, yeah, because now I'm kind of like, oh, okay, that's that's a new word. That's interesting. And I thought actually it might have been like a play on the word like, <laughs> L-I-K-E, meaning Andy like chaser. Ah. Like Andy likes chasers, mm. um, you know, or Andy is like a chaser. I don't know. Like, that's kind of where I was. <laughs> going Probably that. even pull him up to, to, to take a look at more of a description, but hey. Uh, we need to. So, anyways, Gary, uh, uh, take us back in time. Going back in time. Yeah, that was in my head too. I just realized. Okay. Uh, uh and uh, let us know and, and talk to us about the past month, uh, in shows. Uh, well, at the beginning of the month, we did a what's going on for the month of April, which was the first full month of COVID craziness mm -hmm. so welcome to month two mm -hmm. uh then we did uh let's talk about gear part two where tony uh cubs is came back and talked to us more about um gear acquiring it um inventory that kind of stuff and actually we're planning to have him next sunday Woo! so uh, he'll be back he'll be back for part three spanks for everyone um <laughs> Then uh, we did CO 554, COVID-19 and semen, uh, because I wanted to talk about how uh, there had been a very small study out of China that said that there had been um, particulate of the COVID-19 virus found in semen. Yeah, we're um, not talking and about I, uh, people who are in ships. Correct. S-E-M-E-N. Um, so... Water. <laughs> oh my god you're such a dad um so <laughs> sadly my so the, child passed but we won't get into that uh, yeah so um you know it's it was disconcerting to me this concept that you know it could be in body fluids and what that means for the landscape of the future until we have a vaccine you know whether or not you can be with somebody and people have admittedly said to me you know that like those i i don't know all right, I'm just going to say it like this. this is a little controversial. Those that are taking COVID-19 seriously are uncomfortable about playing with others mm. because you just don't know what the circumstances are. You know, um, the only thing that would be an assured thing is if both of you had been tested and both of you came up for positive on what we call an IgG test, which is for antibodies to COVID. And then you could be like, okay, you cool. I'm cool. Let's be cool with our, with our freak. You know what I mean? This 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 seems and, very similar to another situation. Anyway, okay. Um, 
So, but because, you know, we're, we're not HIV. at that stage yet. What? I'm talking about HIV. Oh, well, uh, kind of. But it's it's slightly different. Like, the difference is, and this is my problem right now that I'm having with people, is that, you know, yes, we have more testing available in in general, but it is not universal. And people who are going to Rite Aids or CVS or wherever you can to get a test, and the result becomes negative, child, I don't know how to tell this to you, but that test result means nothing. All it means is for the moment you had testing done, you were negative. That's all it means. It means nothing about four hours later, the next day, the next week. It means nothing about that. It is not an immunity test. It is just simply uh, like a snapshot for a brief moment. And that's the issue that I have is that people are like, oh, I'm negative. That's nice. That doesn't mean you're negative forever. And technically that's true if you were to apply the same thing to HIV. But HIV has a different kind of like life cycle and mm-hmm. we understand that whole picture. Mm-hmm. We don't with COVID. So um, you could be an asymptomatic carrier within hours of a negative test if you'd been exposed and you didn't know it. So it, it, that's... Anyways, I don't want to get on a soapbox again, but <laughs> that was the whole point of that discussion about that episode was like, people want to hook up, but people don't know what they can do to hook up. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's still difficult. And speaking of difficulties, the very next week, we had Mr. Ed Angelini Cook, our resident sex therapist, come on, and we did Landscape of Relationships Part 4, and we talked about jealousy. Uh, so we talked about... Um, emotions and processing and uh, I really recommend if people are new to relationship or think that they want to improve on their relationship um, and it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship really listen to the series because I think we cover some really good stuff Mm -hmm. over the episodes and this one was good although it seemed to me a little bit more on the Hmm. I guess cerebral like (laughs) it was really a thinker about understanding your motivations where they come from and what to do with that and really importantly my favorite part was like i think we were all in agreement that there's that jealousy is not always a negative Mm -hmm. emotion um it can be healthy if you like work at it that way um you know like i i think of it this way i look at my friends my chosen family who are in relationships with beautiful souls and i could be jealous of that but it's not a like a rage jealousy it's not an anger based jealousy um and it's not a sad jealousy like i can be jealous of the fact that they found somebody and that they're you know partnered and living their lives together and it's an aspirational kind of jealousy like oh like that is the thing that i want Mm -hmm. at some point in the future kind of stuff so yeah so those are the shows for the past. Um, and guess what? We're actually recording a show during the month. Uh, what's going on show during the month that the show is referencing. <laughs> Thank heavens for what? Five. Is it five Sundays this year? Yep. This month. Mm-hmm. There we go. <laughs> Thank heavens for five Sundays. Also means five pictures or five weeks or three pictures. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Gary, uh, for for the thing that your mouse cursor is at, did you want to go over that first before we get into the next part? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we can. I Let think me... it's more. Well, I don't know about more important because of where we are uh, after this. Way but... to flow the show. Yeah. I think yeah. So. So one thing we missed. Um, Yeah, like I wasn't sure if you two knew about this because I just found out. I did not. I did not either. Um, So here's how I came about this. So I'll tell you real quick, like uh, side link story. Um, The gentleman that we're going to talk about tomorrow is birth is the birthday. Oh, so I got my notification reminder from my calendar and I was like, oh, okay. And then 
I was on Facebook and then I saw someone post about the birthday, but the way they phrased it and posted, I was like, whoa, Mm -hmm. that does not read what I would expect. So then I went and investigated further. So, Mm. um, and I don't think we've had to discuss this kind of a content yet in the history of the podcast. No. I don't think Um, we've actually discussed it at all. Well, I mean, like, uh, not this specific person, but like, mm. this no, style. no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're putting down. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we've discussed this sort of situation directly. Yeah. So, for those of you that uh, have not been to the website to see like the breakdown of the episode, um, what we're going to talk about, like, this is unexpected, um, but we're going to have just a brief little discussion, um, or as long as we want, about in memoriam. Um, Mm -hmm. so back in, oh, God bless. Hang on. I got to see when it was 2016, 2015, November of 2015, we did an episode, um, CAL 341 called the Santa Claus interview. And we got to, uh, be blessed with having an interview with Jim Stevenson, who is one of the professional Santa Clauses that was in the 2014 documentary. I am Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. And Jim uh, is from Texas and was actually a Mr. TBRU uh, previously and uh, was an out and proud uh, Santa bear, like professional Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. And so he was in the documentary about these people who portray Santa Claus and what that career is like, what that job is like. Um, and it was really touching to see his story the way it had been produced and edited um and so uh, i knew about the the documentary when it came out in 2014 and then in 2015 i think it was going to dvd digital release Mm -hmm. and so i had friended him on facebook and had reached out and was kind of like hey i don't would you be willing to be a guest on a podcast and he did um which was pretty awesome. And he was, uh, it was really nice to, to have a chat and unbeknownst to us, which I'm feeling poopy about, honestly, uh, we did not know that he passed away on February 12th this year. Wow. Um, so I checked out his Facebook page cause this is the thing, like tomorrow was going to be his birthday. I had the reminder, um, come up. And it was kind of like, oh, I wonder what's going on with him. And before I even went to his page, I was on Facebook and I saw that someone else who was friends with him on Facebook said, you know, basically rest in peace, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wait, what? And I was Mm. like, and I thought that like the way they phrased it, I was like, oh, no, like this just happened. Mm. So then I went to his Facebook page and then I found out, oh, no, this happened months ago. Yeah. And I completely missed it. Um, Wasn't aware at all. I think we all missed it. Um, I will say it's one of the good and bad things about Facebook sometimes is that the way they have everything set up, you sometimes don't get larger stories. And obviously he himself did not post anything. It was other people that were posting on his page that kind of announced it. So if you were friends with him, which I'm also friends with him on Facebook, um, you probably didn't get the information um, through like his page, you would have essentially had to have gone to his page and seen people posting about things to know what was going on. Mm. Um, but um, I just I wanted to check since his birthday was listed. I was like, I wonder if they have, you know, how long how when he was born, and they do. So he is he was seventy eight years old. Um. Yeah. And I don't know long. I feel like he had been doing the Santa thing for a long time, if I remember correctly. So. Yeah, for quite a while. Yeah. So, you know. That's unfortunate. Someone who I will say I'm sure brought joy to many lives. He was a nice guy to talk to. Oh, yeah, I remember the conversation. 
And if you want to hear it, we'll have a link to it uh, in our show notes. You can pop right down there to to see it. I'm gonna double check to make sure everything's working on that page too. Yeah, he um, he just had a really, really great spirit. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, was a bear in very many ways. Um, he was active in the community, uh, had been a title holder, um, notably wasn't uh, probably as tech savvy as we are, but <laughs> we had to call him on his he... phone uh, via Skype. Uh, yeah. For that interview. But he did know how to use Tumblr at one point. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. Uh, yeah. So I was, I was pretty bummed today to find out that he had passed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so what I was saying before, right before, um, like leading into this was, I don't think in the history of the podcast we've ever had someone that we've interviewed that we know of that has mm-hmm. passed away. So I was like, oh, okay. That's new. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he, uh, I will not never forget the, like, the, the, oh, what's the word? Um, the, the charm and the impishness, that's what it is, of his personality. Like the, the one shot that they have that we, used on the website that i love is the poster like i think there was five or six santas and his in particular and if i remember in the interview he said like it was on a whim like it wasn't that shot of him that picture was not the planned shot they were going to do mm-hmm. but he has his rainbow suspenders on under his santa claus outfit yeah and he pulls the jacket aside and so there's the rainbow suspender. And that was the thing I knew of him first. Like instantly I saw the picture promoting the documentary and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> because we've, we've talked about it many times on the podcast about that. Santa Claus as an archetype is a bit of a fantasy figure for us. Um, you know, in, in varying ways, sexually and otherwise. And, so for there to be representation of a gay bear, Santa Claus was like, what? Like, you know, kind of mind blowing. Um, and that's what really drew me to watch the documentary. I probably would have watched it otherwise, but that was that was the definitive like deciding mm. factor. I was like, I need to know more about this dude. Like, what is the story there? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that that happened. So rest mm-hmm. in peace, or Santa Bear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he will be missed. Um, yeah, greatly, and I look forward to finding out who the others are, so to speak. He wasn't the only one, and to be fair, the documentary doesn't cover all the individuals who, you know, do Santa Claus professionally or even mm-hmm. um, as a hobby. Um, yeah, but so perhaps there will be more to come uh, from that documentary in the future. Huh. So a moment of silence for, for mm-hmm. Santa Bear. And with that, let's get into something a little bit porny. <laughs> And hopefully they'll prevent us from being flagged. Anyway. <laughs> not like we don't get flagged uh, enough, but still. Anyway, so what I got is actually a uh, 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 inner our Twitter pics here because, you know, rip Tumblr. I'm not sure what's going on with that right now, but anyways. Uh, I got one from Pup Rex, and that's W-R-E-C-K-S. Um, and he, uh, I follow him. He's adorable, uh, uh, sup pup, big bearish guy. And, uh, I just got this cute little one, which he titled, uh, Florida fat pool dad vibes. <laughs> and he's got like this, these, uh, 
like Hawaiian that 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 swim trunks on and shirtless, yeah. and he's got this goofy straw-ish hat. I don't know what type of hat you would call that. On and he's just sitting by the t- pool, beverage in hand, probably a Coke Zero. Based off of what I can see of the can, but you know, you can only see so much. <laughs> and he's adorable. Aww. I think I follow him. I'm pretty sure I do. If you don't, you should. Well, I'm, I know I follow. Yeah, I do. I figure as much. <laughs> well, <laughs> a pup that's a big guy. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, but this is a really cute picture. Um, I would, I would, yeah, that would be something to do. Like to go to a pool here soon, maybe soon, or maybe not. First time I went looking looking for uh, a Twitter post for today, uh, it wasn't there, and then. I, I reopened my stuff and it was right there on top and I'm like, oh, it's adorable. <laughs> Some would say adorkable, but in any case, it's all good. Yes. In fact, I should probably post that tweet into our chat here. <laughs> anybody who's watching, I'm not sure if anybody's there right now uh, for the live stream, but that's okay. Yeah. In any case, this will be on our website, so. Yeah, and the cool thing about Twitter, I can embed it on the website too, so you'll be able to just see it in the post. Mm. Anyways, so that's my pick. Something adorable, adaptable, something like that. I think adorable is good. Okay, Damon, what do you got? Uh, I got sponsored by Bacon. Um, this is um. From at um, Jin Gizalt, um, um or Gizor, um, and it is a Gizalt. very cute uh, ginger bear um, posing in his bed. Um, yeah, he's adorable, like, and he. Um, I just looked at his page. He's from Scotland. Yeah. Hence the uh, 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 gingerness. Yeah. And he is also not always shy. He, I've, I think he, I've, I found one of his pictures a while back and I was like, oh, that's beautiful. Yep. He's got a butt and he's gorgeous. So Follow. those eyes, those eyes are. Oh wait, I'm not following you. What? What? <laughs> now following him now. I thought I was. Silly me. Um, but like his, just the eyes, and then like the ginger, just like yeah, I'm. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. I don't the shirt says the T-shirt says. Thereof. The, the shirt is the shirt says "Body by Bacon," which is, I'm assuming is why he got the sponsor by Bacon part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, he's yeah. Gary, what about you? Um, given the current climate of things that are going on uh, that we didn't necessarily touch on in this episode, I was thinking about like this as a topic about um, the incredibly relevant and important Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And a while ago, I on Twitter, I had retweeted this amazing um, tweet in a video um, in which Keys Keysworth says, growing up, I was told that black folks couldn't get tattoos because they were hard to see. And there's a great uh, six minute and 43 second over four million view video about black tattoo artists that that work on black skin Mm -hmm. um so i you know wanted to give some recognition to that because i'll admit it i never thought about it until i saw it get posted about and then i was like oh 
Yeah, it does make sense because of all the the people of color, individuals that I know, the darker your skin, definitively less and less people do I see have ink on them. Mm -hmm. Um, But it doesn't mean it can't be done. There is some interesting good stuff in the video about going to a quality artist who understands like technique and what ink does to skin and how Mm -hmm. to make it look. So um, I thought that that was that was pretty awesome. And to go with that, uh, <laughs> I put up Mr. Pool underscore my beard, a.k.a. always hungry. Um, and he has a picture called I really I'm really out here being this thick. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, mm-hmm. And he is a beautiful black man uh, who does have ink on his uh, right arm, on his left shoulder. He is wearing jorts. I do not hate him for this. <laughs> Y'all can just shut up about it now Mm -hmm. because the man is fine and sexy. Uh, This is, yeah, it is, it is real life. He is standing in his kitchen um, with one arm up, like Mm. kind of supporting him or whatever, but it's just a really good pose and he is thick all over. So there's that. Yes. Um, And to kind of like talk on your, um, the first article that you shared or the first tweet that you shared um as i i heard that too um like growing up like couldn't really get to choose or you got them um and you can only get like black tattoos now um i saw this video when you retweeted it and i watched it and i was like that's it's really great that it can it's possible you just got to find the right um artist um, cause I, I was told that I could never get a color, like colorful tattoo. I would, it would always have to be, if I, if I got a tattoo at all, it would probably have to be all black because that would be the only way that it would show up on my skin mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. And then two, you know, if you got a color full tattoo, um, it's going to fade eventually. So why bother getting the tattoo with color so mm. and it's good like i said it's good to see these artists like um that are knowledgeable and taking the time and you know making these work these tattoo works of art mm-hmm. so yeah so will i get uh, a tattoo we'll see <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's ask this question have you wanted a tattoo oh yeah um uh yes there was a point in time where i did want one um just not so much now but it's not because so much now that oh you can't you know maybe you won't be able to get one but now it's more like i don't know if i want to deal with the pain like i'm just going to be honest with you like that's that's bad yeah everyone says that i have a tattoo (laughs) i mean it it it's it's just like a, a little pinpricky in it and and things and it's just just you just need to yeah. relax and breathe uh, uh-huh. and it's not that uh, bad uh-huh uh-huh i hear you totally hear you jeff however you do not <laughs> like pain at all i do not like that pain that much you, you, i have a very low i mean pain when you go get a shot do you are do you do extremely hate shots or getting blood drawn because it's about pin prickly bit, yeah. like that, just a little more constant. A little bit. Because yeah. I'm a little more. Yeah. Constant. So it it's it the it. Uh, will it happen? Maybe. I'll put it like that. We just we just uh, need to put you unconscious for for just yeah. the time. I have I have um. I'd I'd have to really think about it. Like I've been thinking about it for a while. Jim and I actually. I've had two. I've had two. I mean, um, to be fair, have... nothing like the tattoos like you see in the video. <laughs> They're small mm-hmm. tattoos. Um, Jim and I have have talked about had talked about at one point getting a tattoo together, something to like relate to both of us that we would both get. Um, <laughs> we're they both very conscientious. Yeah, we're both very conscientious about like it's a commitment and it's going to be on your body forever. 
and we wanted something unique that would be representative of both of us, so we haven't really found anything. I mean, he recently got um, his tattoo on his chest um, that um, he took. It took him a while to think about what he wanted specifically. So, mm-hmm. us getting something together, or me getting something on my own, I, 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 I have to. I have to think a lot, a lot about I it. I've had tattoos for almost twenty years now. Maybe a little less, but I was in yeah. college at the time. Or yeah, I was in college at the time that I got both of those tattoos. So yep. Yeah, it's, was, it's I got them different times. But mm-hmm. we <laughs> shall see what happens with me, um, and I'm sure you you will probably be. Maybe not the first, but you will you will be in the know, and so will our our um, fans and followers. You'll I'm be sure. showing it off. Oh yeah, unless well, no, I I probably would not get in a space where I can't like show it off. I'm not getting a tramp stamp. No. Well, I mean, <laughs> no one really sees my tattoos very often at all, but that's just because they're in my back and shoulder blades. So. I just, and they're viewable because all I need to do is uh, take off my shirt or lift my shirt uh, high enough. Mm. And it's not in decent exposure. <sighs> Legally speaking, okay. some people might disagree on the decency of my my body, but uh, oh, fuck God. in that case. <laughs> anyway, there's that. Thank you for sharing, Gary. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's at least, you know, it's neato. what I could do about that. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, and I've thought about, you know, well, hell, I've pretty much decided since college that I've wanted to get a tattoo. I just haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, partially because I don't know what design I want. Although exactly. I had a revelation recently about something that I might want. And um, there is, hang on, let me think if I can remember what it's called. Uh Um, there is a really good company online that I have actually used. Uh, Let me see if this is the right one. There's probably quite a few out there. Uh, Come on. You can load any day now. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think this is them. It's called Inkbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's temporary tattoos. Yeah. And you can uh, also do custom, like you don't have to go with a, a predetermined design. So you basically create a design, send it to them, and then they will send you that design as an applique. You put it on, um, and it uses a special type of ink. And I can't remember what the what the what the chemical stuff is in the ink, but it's natural, like organic based, and. Mm-hmm. Basically, you apply the the applique to the surface, put some pressure on it, leave it on for a few minutes, and then take it off. And then within 24 hours, the design develops and reveals itself, and it lasts a couple weeks. Yeah. And I actually did that a couple years ago. So it's an excellent way to try a design and or location. Um, and so... Actually, I see it. I have a picture. I might have a picture on my phone somewhere um, from when I actually had it done a couple years mm. ago. Because um, I really liked um, this one bare kind of um, design aesthetic. Because that's the whole thing is like I've wanted something for my astrological sign. I've wanted something for like my um, design, like recognition of like bear pride and the rest mm-hmm. of that stuff oh yeah there we go uh, let me turn the brightness up a little bit i don't know if this will turn out on camera or not really for you guys to see too well um and i can't see my own camera that's not gonna work <laughs> how do i 
Well, if you go to the shared screen, like Jeff is currently sharing his screen, and I can see your are uh, there. Well, what I was trying to do though was see my. How do I? That's not gonna work. Because I want to see myself. How do you pick who is the? No, I don't want that. <laughs> it's not showing me who's talking. Because do you know what I, I mean? I don't think it does thing, that anymore. Yeah, it doesn't do that anymore. Oh fuck. Yeah, sorry. Um, but I can like we can see you right now. I know you do it. Well, because I have, I have a ring light, so I don't know if it's gonna work. Very oh, well. I see oh, it. There it is. Neat. Huh. So yeah, so I had it done on the. I put it on my arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so like it's kind of a stencil-ish design. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very geometric, and I really kind of um, liked it. But now I'm gonna watch on delay <laughs> on my iPad. Yeah, you ooh, not really. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> can't see that too well. But anyways, um, but yeah, I, like I tried it, and I really. Um, I honestly really liked that. Mm. Uh, and so that would be my recommendation to folks. Like if you're thinking about um, getting a tattoo and, and, you know, just to, to fancy try it out or whatever. And like, they also sell their ink like as a liquid in mm-hmm. a bottle applique. So like if you're a freehand artist type and you want to temporarily try something. Um, yeah. So Yep, yep, yep. It's uh, it's kind of cool. In fact, I'm pretty sure I know of at least one other person that's done it. Mm. So now that I've now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I could do that again with this other design thing I'm thinking about, <laughs> <laughs> which is not relevant to the design I just showed you at all. But Ooh. but it might be something fun to do. In any case, I will say this, just for anybody who's interested in really thinking about going the route that I just discussed. Um, if you have someone that can assist you with an application, I would say by all means do it. So like Damon, if Jim could help you depending Uh on the placement, that can be really, really helpful because I found it a struggle to be able to reach and like get it right on my arm arm correctly. (laughs) Yeah. Or like if you're going to try to put it on your chest or on your, especially on your back, like it depends on where you're going to try to put it on your body. So, like, if you have some assistance. <laughs> assistance is nice. Yeah, it would it could benefit you. So, what were you just... What was that shock, like... Oh, I found a really cool... Um, on their site, I found a really cool design that... Um, I... Oh, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> just... I just... It, it... 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 I'll have to show you. I'll show you after the show. But, like... Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. What else do you have, Gary? Uh, Are you looking up something else? No. Did you talk about your link? No, we. you have another Twitter post. No, he did that one. Did that the one. Link, the, the, the thick one. Oh, yeah, we, uh, you we were talking about, about those one. together. Yes. I got I talked about because the I was so busy like... watching the video. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm, I'm, I'm so confused. I'm sure I covered both. Anyways, <laughs> moving on into the links. Uh, so my Dragonborn Barbarian is uh, known as Krebus, which ended up being a just randomly generated name. Mm-hmm. And just one day I was just searching for some images for roll 20 and everything and i found this beautiful piece of art by uh uh, i forgot his actual name but on deviantart his uh id is el uh jore or jorge like the spanish like he's jorge yeah anyways um that it was a commission that he did for somebody else for a dragon board barbarian and it was like oh, that is totally like what 
what he would look like. And this is like my style. It's this strong man, chubby dragon board mm-hmm. with an icy beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it, the, the actual uh, color for the, for this dragonborn was supposed to be silver uh but mine is a white so which is mm. kind of close um they're kind of like the equivalents between the metallics and the the, the chromatics anyways mm-hmm. and i'm like that's totally what he would be in fact and this is all i i created the character before i even saw this picture but he he was i'm creating him to be uh uh using a warhammer and a shield mm-hmm. this one has a warhammer and a shield i created him to eventually become a uh a, a totem bear barbarian so like his totem animal is a bear mm-hmm. and he has on his chest a bear paw <laughs> tattoo i'm like that's this is basically krebus but like mine my guy is supposed to be around 25 years old and this guy looks like he's much older. So I'm like, this is like Krebus in, in 20 years. <laughs> nice. Like he wouldn't necessarily have that full big old mm-hmm. beard. Maybe, a, maybe a, a, just like a goatee ish or something, but, uh, and it was just perfect. And it's a beautiful, beautiful drawing, um, a piece of art. So I, I, I wanted to share it. Nice. So now you guys can see essentially what my D and D character looks like. Mm. Cool scenes. Yep. Jerry, what's been going on over in the Netflix? <laughs> oh well, I can't speak for all of Netflix, but I have two picks. Um, so if y'all love. Patton Oswald. Yes. Well, you know, some people may he may not be their cup of tea. Um, <laughs> but he has a special called Patton Oswald. I love everything. Um, he did a stand up special about turning 50. Um, one of the things that he talks about in the stand up that's really great is about the fact that he was in a dark place for a while. And for those of you that don't know, his wife had taken her life. And um, that was really hard for him, especially being a comedian and having, uh, you know, a family, kids, and um, Mm -hmm. maybe just one child I can't recall. And so he talks about that and how he found love again and got remarried, which I didn't know that part. Um, So he talks about that in the the special. Uh, So that recently just came out like in the past week, I want to say. Maybe two weeks. Mm. And on a lighter note, um, if you have been paying any attention to me talking about Netflix stuff before, I have been a big fan of the animated She-Ra in the Princesses of Power series. Yeah. Season five has recently been released. It is the final, like the series finale, like last season. Uh is good (laughs) and um if you didn't know it is if i recall correctly primarily mostly majority women that Mm -hmm. produced animated directed wrote the whole thing um the woman uh who created it is very like proud forward and strategically wanted to tell stories about inclusivity and female empowerment. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So there are, there is a lesbian couple mm-hmm. uh, amongst the princesses in the series. Um, I'm there, not going to spoil there anything. There are also but some I, gay parents, like gay male parents. Yes. Yes, yes that's true. Those parents. Yeah, so uh, if you yeah, watched the, this last thing and you got all the way to the very end, to like the, season, what's that? 
Season five or season four? Season five. Okay. And you got to the last two episodes. There is a big old revelation that I am not going to spoil that I am still not sure how I feel about. <laughs> oh, my God. So I have been wanting to um, basically bend the whole um, final season. And I, I, I've been wanting to, and I just haven't had a real, I just haven't had time to just sit and do it. Mm-hmm. Not that I've not had time, but you know what I mean. Like, I just. Yeah. You've been so, doing other things. Yeah. So I, I want, the plan will be hopefully soon. Um, I've been watching actually Avatar. Um, oh, which yeah. Is, is, it, which is, is both series on Netflix? Not both series. I know just the first season is on, our first series is on um, um, Netflix right now. Oh, okay. um, I've heard that the second, like The Legend of Korra is on, um, I think it's on Hulu or something. I can't remember. Don't don't quote me on that because it's been a long time. Um, but um, I've been watching, I watched the entire first season recently um i'm gonna watch the second and i'm gonna watch the third i'm actually a part of a um discussion group because it why not so because i love that fucking show so there's that Mm. um yeah so i would say make the time now that you can uh Mm -hmm. be prepared to binge by the way if i recall correctly episodes each season is roughly a dozen or 13 episodes and each episode is about between 25 and 30 minutes. Like Mm. it's like 22, 23, 27, 25. Like it kind of bounces around a little bit, but it's pretty consistent. So show length. So to binge a season is like a whole evening night kind of thing. Cause you're basically watching it for about six hours. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, which I may or may not have done recently on a weekend. Uh, so, yeah. I would say um, definitely uh, give it a try. The very beginning, like the very first season, I found a little frustrating. But when you have to develop character and story arcs and la 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 la, like, you know, mm-hmm. some, things, some things are there as annoyances. They have to be. <laughs> um, and then when you get to the end of the whole series, you get to see whether or not there's redemption, like moments for characters or whether or not they don't rise to the occasion, which is really intriguing. Um, so yeah, Jeff, did you watch the, the season five yet? Uh, I have not, I haven't had Netflix for several months. Oh, okay. But um, I'm thinking about re-upping and watching but i'm currently in the middle of a different type of binge so i'm just keeping that down even though i probably could cancel disney plus right now but i don't know (gasps) how dare you i I watched all the star wars stuff and that's pretty much covered everything okay have you watched not that i want to get into disney plus a lot have you watched the gallery the sort of documentary series like discussions about them making the mandalorian I have not. I'm that's not much good shit. Looking into the documentary stuff. Oh, it's that's that's my big deal. Like that's my forte. I really love like understanding and knowing how things are made. Um, and there's some like that's the funny thing. I was just talking to my best friend about this recently. I'm like, I am so glad I got Disney Plus, but I don't watch it for the for the revolt stuff. I've been watching nothing but original new content. Like that's been me. <laughs> For Disney Plus, so like I'm watching the one day at Disney shorts, um, mm. the behind the scenes, like stuff about like all the different people that like make things happen at the Disney parks and within Disney itself. Um, I really, really love. Um, so, yeah, like like um, archive, there's documentaries, there's amazing stuff about like some of the original Disney artists. Um, uh, there's oh, my God. Uh Matt Goad um, was part of the production staff on this amazing series called Prop Culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you like like that kind of stuff about collectibles and things that were used to make uh, movies and television shows and things like that, he was involved in that. That's an amazing series. Um, so, yeah, like I just 
really, really, really en- enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to Mandalorian season two coming later this year, supposedly. Um, and I just got done watching some more YouTube, like uh, news, rumored conspiracy, whatever you want to call it about things happening in the Star Wars universe. So mm. I very much live on the periphery. I, like I, I let other people do all the work and then I just kind of like <laughs> absorb it. So I'm, I'm highly excited and anticipating some rumored new three different series stuff uh, that could be coming. Um, mm-hmm. I really think that Disney, while I had reservations in the beginning before it launched about Disney plus, I think they've <sighs> really found a good sweet spot about creating new content in a deliverable format that does not have to go to the theater, big screen. Um, and like the innovation of what they did with the Mandalorian, especially this last fifth episode of the gallery is just crazy where they talk about the technology that they use to film where they blended gaming VR concepts and CGI like stuff in real time in the space that they made. So like when you watch the series, it's practically impossible to tell what is not real and what is real surrounding the actors. Um, Mm. Yeah. Like just, 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 just good stuff. And of course now there's all these rumors about who's going to be in season two. And (laughs) uh, there's discussion that apparently Disney is considering making a like star Wars universe, like an MCU thing where, they're going to take everything that exists uh, that is not considered legend and make it all tie in. So there's rumors that pieces of Rebels and Clone Wars and the movies and the Mandalorian, like it's all just going to come together. So, well, there there is connection. There was some connections in the fact that uh, the character Ahsoka from Clone Wars is a character in mm-hmm. Rebels, and in Rise mm-hmm. of Skywalker, you hear Ahsoka's voice. Yes, and she is rumored to be getting her own series. More to be seen on that. So excited! And uh, oh yeah, I... they. I think somebody has already been cast as Ahsoka, f- possibly for the Mandalorian. That's yeah, my understanding. Rosario Dawson, I think it was. Correct. Which, but just makes also... me excited because I love Ahsoka. Yeah. Well, now there's there's another rumor that that's uh, what I still gonna... need it for because I haven't finished the last season of Clone Wars. Oh, <gasps> Jeff. Um, I have just been chastised by Gary. You have to. It's so good. It's like the best of practically the entire universe. Like, I, I, I will, I will. Practically better Maybe than the I'll films. Maybe I'll pause my my critical role rewatch and, and go. There's, down. there's a rumor. This is part of what I was just listening to before we like started recording tonight. There was a YouTube discussion of like this rumor going on that's been substantiated, quote unquote, uh, that they are doing a sequel animated series to Rebels that is supposed to be done in the Clone Wars animation style about the search for Ezra Bridger, who is a character in Rebels. Um, there's a, there's like a whole so is it a prequel yeah. to Rebels. No, no, it's a sequel. So, oh, and it's, yeah. and in theory, it would overlay, like, to the movie timelines, possibly. Um, oh, I can see it. Like, and some other, yeah, so. I think they ended Rebels right soon before the original series started. So I mean, uh, yes, six, like uh, four or five. Like six. I'd have to go look at the timeline, but theoretically, um, when Rebels pretty much ends, uh, it's right before Episode Four. Yeah, that's what that's why I'm thinking. It's, it's right along the lines of uh, uh, yeah. Rogue One. Hey, but you know what? That's the end. <laughs> Probably should should kind of wrap the show up. Uh, uh, sorry, folks. Might talk more about this in the post show, but if you were in the post show, uh, you should probably put the <laughs> Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, which, by the way, we owe you stuff. We're, we're working on that. 
Um, so just to let you know that. And that's at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, one thing we were looking up, is it? did you check to see if it was available now, Gary? It was not at the beginning of the show because if you read the email, it says it could take up to 24 hours to appear. So it's kind of annoying. Just as a preview for all you listening, uh, watch our store because we have a brand spanking new shirt coming out, which is actually a continuation of a series of shirts, uh, which were originally designed by uh, Smashy. Uh, (gasps) There it is. It's there? Okay. So it's there. So if you pop over to Zazzle.com or Zazzle.ca, et cetera, et cetera, cetera, I've been over that so many times. Uh, Go over to Zazzle slash Cubs Out Loud and uh check out our store you will see a new drag uh pride uh consent is my foreplay shirt uh we, I, I need to still work on the light version but the dark version is available for you right now uh so go check that out uh if you want to contact us you can pop over to our website comes out shoot us an email it comes out loud at gmail.com leave us a voicemail sexy or otherwise or just something weird because i want to make sure that it stays around uh at 361 see all talk that's 361 put that in your phone for speed dial purposes <laughs> uh you can also find us various social media outlets at comes out loud in the appropriate place of the url that's instagram facebook tumblr twitter and youtube uh, you can also join our Entourage chat, which I can actually now dictate from my Apple Watch uh, and get notifications of um, at uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you'd like to know when we're planning to record these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. So you see him here. Uh, you can also rate us on uh, Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts. Uh, and Spotify, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box step, box puppy, box cub, box something or other. I'm Theater Cub79 on most bear related sites, so you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to find me online, uh, you can pretty much put in Gerber73, that's G A R B E A R 73. Uh, yeah, shoot me a message. And with that, take it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.